If I told you that modern engines are now being designed to run on oil so thin it pours like water, you'd probably assume I'm exaggerating. But the surprising truth is that no one is telling drivers how far this trend has already gone. For years, 0W20 was considered extremely thin, almost delicate, but it's no longer the thinnest oil in circulation. Many of today's newest cars are coming from the factory with 0W16, and a few experimental engines are being tested with oils as thin as 0W8. Yes, 0W8, oil so light you can barely feel it between your fingers. Automakers promote these oils as breakthroughs in efficiency, but many seasoned mechanics warn that the push toward ultra-thin oil may shorten engine life if drivers don't fully understand why this change is happening. Before you pour anything into your engine, it's important to know whether thinner oil is protecting your engine or slowly wearing it down, and whether 0W16 should be trusted at all. To understand the situation, you have to recognize that engines today are nothing like the ones from even 20 years ago. Many drivers still believe that engines need thick oil to protect metal surfaces from grinding against each other, and for decades, that belief was justified. Older engines were built with noticeably wider bearing clearances, looser piston-to-wall tolerances, larger oil passages, and lower compression ratios. These designs relied on thicker oils like 10W40 or 15W40 to maintain a stable oil film strong enough to protect moving components. But things have changed. Modern engines are engineered with tolerances so tight they resemble precision surgical instruments more than traditional automotive machinery. Take a modern Honda 2.0 liter engine, for example. The bearing clearances in that engine are measured in microns, and the oil passages are so narrow that a few tiny particles of debris could disrupt flow. These engines depend on lightweight oils that can circulate instantly on cold starts, slip through ultra-tight gaps, reduce friction at microscopic contact points, and survive the intense heat produced by turbochargers and high-pressure direct injection systems. Because of these ultra-precise internal designs, manufacturers have been gradually phasing out the thicker viscosities that were once considered standard. The oil your parents or grandparents used isn't coming back. Whether drivers like it or not, the industry is moving toward thinner oil because modern engines are built around it. But that doesn't fully explain the shift. To understand why thinner oils have become the new normal, you have to look at what automakers care about most, reducing friction to increase fuel economy. Every tiny pocket of resistance inside an engine costs energy, and the thicker the oil, the more work the engine has to do to pump it through bearings, camshaft passages, turbo feed lines, and cooling jets. Even a small reduction in viscosity lowers that resistance, and when you multiply that by millions of engine cycles per minute, the difference becomes measurable. Automakers have found that switching from 5W30 to 0W20 can improve fuel economy by half a mile per gallon or more in laboratory testing. Dropping from 0W20 to 0W16 adds a little more. Those numbers may not matter to you, but to automakers struggling to meet strict emissions and fuel economy targets, they matter a lot. That brings us to the political side of the story. In the United States, Japan, and Europe, manufacturers face increasingly aggressive fuel efficiency regulations. If they fail to meet fleet-wide MPG requirements, the penalties can reach millions of dollars. Designing entirely new engines is expensive and slow, but switching to thin oil? That's one of the fastest, cheapest ways to boost MPG on the test cycle without changing the engine's core design. So while automakers often claim they're using thin oil purely to benefit the customer, a big part of the push comes from the pressure to comply with national emissions laws and improve reported fuel economy. In many ways, the industry's shift toward ultra-thin oil has far less to do with protecting engines and far more to do with passing government testing. Of course, it's not just politics and engineering. There's real science behind why thin oil can work when the engine is designed around it. Today's engines aren't simply older designs using a newer oil grade. They are built from the ground up with thin oil in mind. They feature ultra-tight bearing clearances, lighter pistons and crankshafts that reduce internal mass, and advanced variable displacement oil pumps that can adjust pressure based on driving conditions. 
These modern systems let the engine maintain lubrication even with a thinner film. Many engines now also rely on DLC coatings or diamond-like carbon coatings on major friction surfaces. These coatings dramatically reduce friction and allow the oil film to be thinner without causing instant wear. That said, thin oil isn't inherently safe. One of the major drawbacks of low viscosity oil is that it breaks down faster under high heat, high RPM, heavy load, turbo boost, fuel dilution, and extended oil change intervals. Real world tests have shown that 0W20 can lose up to 18% of its viscosity after just a few thousand miles in hot climates, and some samples of 0W16 have thinned to the point of behaving like an even lighter grade. When oil becomes too thin, the protective film between metal surfaces can collapse, leading to increased wear or catastrophic engine damage. This is one reason why the same engine that uses 0W16 in the United States may be recommended to run 5W30 or even 10W30 in regions like Australia or the Middle East, where hotter temperatures make thin oil far less able. In these markets, engine longevity takes priority over squeezing out a fractional MPG improvement. So, the big question becomes, if modern engines are designed for thin oil, is 0W16 actually safe for everyday drivers? The answer is more complicated than automakers admit. Thin oil can be perfectly safe if your engine was engineered for it, your driving conditions are mild, and you stick to shorter oil change intervals. But if you drive in extreme heat, tow heavy loads, put a lot of miles on your vehicle, or own a turbocharged engine, the thin oil that improves fuel economy on paper may not offer the long-term protection your engine truly needs. Understanding these trade-offs is crucial because while manufacturers focus on regulations and fuel economy statistics, drivers ultimately care about one thing, how long their engines will last. Now that we understand why thin oil exists and how automakers design engines around it, we need to look deeper into something that most oil companies and marketing departments don't openly discuss how thin oil behaves once it's inside a real engine, not in a controlled lab environment, but in the daily conditions that engines actually face. Mechanics don't judge oil based on promises printed on the bottle. They judge it based on wear metals, oil breakdown, and what engines look like when they're torn apart. And when you start comparing engines running 0W16 to identical engines running thicker oil like 5W30, the differences become harder to ignore. Take the Toyota A25A 2.5-liter engine, for example. In a real-world comparison, two identical engines were used in similar conditions, with the only difference being the oil viscosity. The US spec engine used 0W16 as recommended, while the Australian version used 5W30. After around 80,000 miles, the engine running 0W16 showed noticeable varnish buildup around the timing chain area, higher iron content in the oil analysis, and light scoring on the piston rings. Meanwhile, the 5W30 engine displayed significantly lower wear metals, almost no varnish, and cleaner internal surfaces overall. Although the 0W16 engine achieved slightly better fuel economy, the engine running 5W30 demonstrated far clearer signs of long-term durability. It wasn't a dramatic difference, but it was consistent and measurable, exactly the kind of difference mechanics pay attention to. This pattern becomes even more pronounced in engines known for fuel dilution issues, such as Honda's 1.5-liter turbocharged L15B7. The design of this engine allows small amounts of fuel to seep past the piston rings, thinning the oil in the crankcase. In that engine, 0W20 has been shown to shear down to the equivalent of 0W12 after just a few thousand miles in cold climates, especially when short trips prevent the engine from reaching full operating temperature. When the oil becomes too thin, turbocharger bearings can wear prematurely and internal components lose their protective oil film. Many Honda technicians across the U.S. and Canada quietly recommend switching customers to 5W30 to avoid long-term damage, even though the manual specifies 0W20. It's not because they're ignoring the manufacturer, it's because they've seen what happens when fuel dilution and thin oil combine over many oil change cycles. Subaru engines tell a similar story. In the United States, many Subaru engines are filled with 0W20 from the factory. But in Japan, the exact same engines, same part numbers, same internal components, are recommended to run 5W30. 
After long-term comparisons, U.S. engines running 0W20 have shown more timing chain stretch, higher oil consumption, and increased wear metals. Meanwhile, the Japanese engines running thicker oil do not exhibit the same issues. What's most interesting is that Subaru never publicly acknowledges this difference. It's simply listed differently in regional manuals. Again, the engine didn't change, only the oil did. These examples raise a bigger question. Why do different regions get different oil recommendations for the same engines? And the answer reveals the complex relationship between engineering reality and government regulation. In countries like the U.S. and parts of Europe, strict emissions and fuel economy standards push manufacturers toward the thinnest oil that can safely survive the warranty period. Thinner oil means better MPG on standardized test cycles like EPA and WLTP, and better MPG results translate into fewer fines and less pressure on automakers.